The Galen Hour. Every Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. on Love Television and Facebook Live. with us here tonight. This is the final show of our first season. As you may note, we have a special guest on with us tonight, but we'll get into introductions right after we do this brief um, welcome. So the Galen Hour is a show that's produced and directed by Galen University. It showcases all things Eagle and Galen. Um, we talk about our soaring eagles. We talk about our faculty and our programs. You get to meet our deans. We talk about all the interesting things happening and all the new developments at Galen University. We touch on national issues. We talk about our commitment to lifelong learning, academic excellence, and sustainable development. We're here every Thursday night, 8 o'clock, on Love TV, and stream live on Love Facebook page, and shared on Galen's Facebook page. We welcome you to our, our final episode for this season, and we look forward to the discussion we'll have tonight. So stay tuned. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with the Galen Hour. Our Galen University family urges you to take the stand with us to get vaccinated so that we can live healthier and safer lives. I am Dr. Eve Aird, your provost. I took the COVID-19 vaccine for my husband's health, my family's health, and for my health and most especially for your health, for the health of the Galen faculty, staff, and students, and for Belize's health. Join me in taking the COVID-19 vaccine so we can return to campus in September, confident that we are in a safe, healthy environment, and so that we can help Belize to recover from this COVID-19 pandemic. Let's get together and save our country. Get vaccinated today. I'm Dr. Sylvia Catus, Dean of the Faculty of Management and Entrepreneurship, and I'm fully vaccinated. I get vaccinated for the sake of my students, my family and colleagues. I urge all our students and all of Belize to get vaccinated. For the safety of our country, get vaccinated today. I'm Sherry Gibbs, the Dean for the Faculty of Art, Science and Technology. I got vaccinated because I trust the science, but because I also want to protect my family, my colleagues and my students. I can't wait to see them again in September. So I encourage everybody out there to get vaccinated so we can protect each other. I'm Coach Bernie Tarr and let's play our role and get vaccinated. For your future, for my future, for our future, let's keep Belize safe. Galen University, promoting academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. Visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz and remember to follow us on our social media for more updates. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. Thank you for staying tuned. Tonight we have a little different arrangement and we're pleased to have on set with us a very special guest, and Sir Calvi Young, the Governor General of Belize from 1993 to 2021. Welcome, Sir Calvi. Uh, we also have with us Dr. Alain Harrison, who is a member of the faculty at, of um, education at Galen University. Dr. Alain, welcome. And we have with us Mr. Fernando Coburn. Chris. Chris Coburn. Chris Crossburn. 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 My apologies, okay. Fernando. Um, and Fernando is um, a painter and artist. And Fernando is responsible for a beautiful um, piece that we have um, honored Sir Carver with at our 18 commencement exercises um, that have took place last Sunday at San Ignacio Hotel. So welcome to our guests. And I'd like for us to um, we start a discussion, but we really want to talk this, um, this, uh, this show on tonight about a, the piece that we have um, given or uh, gifted to Sir Carver. And um, so I'd like for us to look at the video of the gifting of the artwork that was done by Mr. Fernando, and then we can start a discussion there. 
So let's take a look at the, the portion of our commencement exercises where we gifted Sir Carville Young. Your Excellency, former Governor General of Belize, Sir Carville Young, Galen University is indeed very pleased to honor you today for the outstanding contribution you have made to our beloved nation, Belize. Work that we are sure will live on because not only have you contributed in the field of music, but also in the fields of education, helping our youths to aspire to become better people. And as we said in our presentation, you have done all this in a humble and dignified manner. And the work that you have started will live on long after you. Excellency, we ask that you accept the honor that we are about to bestow on you, and it comes from the bottom of our heart, hearts. As you know, Sir Colville became our nation's second Governor General on the 17th of November 1993, and has the distinction of serving as Governor General during the full terms of the governments of Prime Minister Right Honorable Sir Manuel Esquivel, Prime Minister Right Honorable Said Musa, Prime Minister Right Honorable Dean Barrow, and is now demitting has now demitted office in, after spending six months in the administration of now Prime Minister. We now have the unveiling of a painting that Galen University commissioned to honor Sir Colville Young. And we have the artist Fernando Cruz there. And this this paint, this beautiful painting that was rendered by the artist focuses or was inspired by particularly two short stories from Sir Colville, your 1991 Pataki Full. The two short stories that inspired this painting is the Nativity story, the Christmas story, and Bertie Bullfrog and his neighbors. <laughs> at, I know it, it, it and at, at um, sometime in the very near future, the artist will sit down with you and give you the full story. It's a beautiful story of how he was able to combine the story of the nativity story, Maria and Jose traveling from Dangriga to Belize City, and Bertie, the bullfrog, where his neighbors were trying to get him to, um, to, um, to yes, <laughs> to, to sing softer by having him believe that if he sang less, he would preserve his voice. And the artist has so beautifully, as you will agree with me, so beautifully combined those two stories that at first might seem that they don't connect, but he has made it come alive as you made it come alive in your um, short stories. And so this painting, we believe, vividly illustrates, it represents a part of your stories and the wacky things that were happening, particularly in um, Bertie the Bullfrog story. And it will serve as a reminder to you, Sir Colville, of your creative life in the arts, but more to Belizeans and the world at large of the giant that you are, the giant who is Sir Colville Young. Thank you. from our recording, from our 
18 commencement exercises where we gifted Sir Carville with that beautiful painting. And I wanted us to then talk a bit about the painting today. It really is very beautiful. I mean, I'm not going to say when it comes to painting, but when I look at that, it really, I find it, 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 it builds a curiosity. So, um, Dr. Harrison, would you like to tell us a little bit about your thoughts on the painting? I know you're very familiar with Sir Carville. You, you're a former student of Sir Carville. And um, you've worked with his literary pieces, so. Ab absolutely. Um, first met Sol Calvo in 1991 at what was then UCB. He was my mentor, still my mentor. I went to him on numerous occasions after mm. I graduated. But he was my advisor, my supervisor for internship. And, and certainly we had many, many conversations as it relates to, to language. Um, and particularly, um, I still believe, and I, I know the last conversation I had with him a few weeks ago on um, his dissertation, Contrastive Analysis. But certainly this painting, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just, I, I must say that um, um, Fernando has so beautifully weaved two stories because we know his 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 <laughs> works um, and I have my copy of <laughs> about 20 years yes. <laughs> I have the, a copy of his book um, so beautifully was able to weave the story of the nativity Sir Colville's interpretation of the biblical story we know mm. of Joseph and Mary traveling mm. to um, to Bethlehem and so Sir Colville has been able to so beautifully place that story in our Belizean culture and bring out, you know, the best stuff. And so Fernando has taken that with what would seem as a wacky story, mm. Bertie, <laughs> Bullfrog and his neighbors, <laughs> and been able to put these two themes into one mm. painting. And I'm sure Fernando can tell us a little bit more yeah. about that. Yes, I'm sure you can, um, Fernando. And I, I would say take, it's no ordinary artist to do what you did. This took a lot of introspection. It took a lot of analysis and really seeing how two very different stories mm -hmm. were combined. And you saw Sarkavo's reaction when he realized which two of his stories <laughs> were combined in that picture. And it is a fantastically beautiful picture. So Fernando, tell us a little bit about the thought process what you went through in creating that lovely piece of work. Um, good mm -hmm. night, everybody. Um, I just, I want to say when Galen approached me, and um, especially with um, Dr. Yed, to, to, do a, to do a piece for Sarah Colville, it was, a, it was a challenge in the sense that how do you, how do you come up with a, with a piece of artwork to, to tell the life of of such a such a great gentleman, so you know, I I decided to instead of focus upon Sarkovi himself, it was I thought it would be better to be able to take part of his literature and put that into an art form, which I can still throw in a little bits little bits of of touches here and there in the artwork mm -hmm. to actually create to reflect part of part of his part of his 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 life. Yeah. So, um, but the the book, the one, the <coughs> the two pieces that um, that I used for the artwork were more so taken because I was I was reading the, the the book that was written about about his life. I think his good friend wrote a wrote a, mm -hmm. wrote a story about his life, no? And um, mm -hmm. but within that within that book, the two acts or the two plays that were focused upon was the Belizean nativity. Sort of the the story of his, his the rendition, Berta child, yeah, mm -hmm. his rend his Belizean rendition, mm -hmm. and Bertie Bullfrog. Mm -hmm. So I thought there must have been something important about these two to be featured within that book. Yeah. So that's where I then decided to look at what uh, what is the comparison between between mm -hmm. the the characters or how, or how I could compare them, and that's how I developed the image that every every everyone has just seen. Yes. <coughs> And it is beautiful. I, I, in a little bit of my research that I did, Sir Calvo, and everyone is listening, um, 
I saw a comment from a, a commenter <laughs> on, um, on the Pataki Fo. And it's hard to not talk about the Pataki Fo and your stories while we're talking about this particular picture. So I just wanted to read this quote right now. The gentleman, uh, he's a contributor by the name of David. He contributed to the Goodreads Review. And he said, I picked up this book on a win at the Belize City Airport just to spend my remaining Belizean currency. It turned out to be the best purchase I made in Belize, including my beer mug. So, <laughs> so literally in trying to get rid of his Belizean money, he bought your book and he thought it was an absolutely fantastic. The characters in the book all spoke to some, they were all impactful characters, all spoke to something cultural about our country. And so there's a lot of cultural issues that are, that are brought forth, forth in these short stories. Uh, absolutely, because in the nativity, um, there is Maria, there is Jose, they're coming from Dangriga. Maria is, you know, about to give birth. And, mm -hmm. you know, but it brings in the, the culture and the goodness because the, um, the worker at the hotel who took her in, you know, it, it just portrays the, the, um, the goodness in us as Belizeans and being neighborly. And, and maybe maybe that's part of the the connection with B um, Bertie Bullfrog mm -hmm. <laughs> and his, his neighbors. And <coughs> as as you um, if you when you read Bertie Bullfrog, they they first wanted to wrap up Bertie in a waha leaf, mm -hmm. right? And it was like no 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 we we, we can't be that mean. We mm -hmm. need to find. And so again, while you might think there is not a connection among and between these stories, when you do a careful analysis, you can see that these seven stories, there is a connection, not just to the culture, but also to, you know, just the goodness of us as, as Belizeans. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think what, what Dr. Harrison is saying is, um, is, <coughs> is true, because even, even in, in our day-to-day -day life here in Belize, even though things might seem might seem, you know, a bit, <clears throat> a bit daunting at times. I think the Belizean people still have a, 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 a spirit of rising, of rising up together, of moving forward. Definitely. And I think what these, what these, in the, what these characters did within Bertie Bullfrog, just to, to talk about that story specifically, is that you know, even though, even though they were, they were, they were frustrated, they were, they were driven crazy by, by his constant singing or croaking. <laughs> You know, they, they did not want to they did not want to harm him. They wanted to, to work together with him. You know, it was a matter of actually trying to in a sense lifting lifting him up to a, to what to what they consider their level, right? Mm -hmm. But but still giving him the opportunity to, to still be able to sing and to mm -hmm. still be able to be part of the community. Mm -hmm. Which I think is actually a beautiful thing. And that's a beautiful part of our Belizean culture. We grew up in a culture and a society where we helped each other where your community was your family. <coughs> and I'd like to believe that that is still true with all of the difficulties we may be experiencing in today's society. We're still at heart a very kind-hearted, very caring mm -hmm. um, society of people who look out for each other. Absolutely. And I think those are some of the, let me remember back to my literature days when you're interpreting <laughs> stories, I think those are some of the themes that you can actually um, read into what you've written, Sir Carville. Yeah, so, so it actually, I mean, there's so much more that we can say, but there's the apple, and I have to bring attention to the apple and the snake. Glad you did. For <laughs> me, that was an optical illusion. I looked at that, and I saw only the snake. I don't know what that says for me, and I hope it says <laughs> good things. <laughs> and it took a while. And I'm like, oh my god, that's an apple with a snake in the middle. That, that was just fantastic artwork. <laughs> and it, I mean, it caught me. My eyes weren't really ready for that, but it's good. So Fernando and well, Dr. I, Harrison. I think, I think looking, looking at the, I mean, we all, we all grew up we all grew up reading the, or knowing about the, the Garden of, of, of Eden, mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, the, mm -hmm. that whole, you know, that whatever happened there. I think within the, within the, within the play, you know, I, um, you, you have the idea of, of, the, of the snake being, well, given a name, Tommy, you know, or mm -hmm. Tommy Gough, mm -hmm. you know, so, which is one of, one of the deadliest vipers within, within Central America, right? Um, and I, I think, you know, to me, when I when I when I look at that, it's it's like you know you 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 
you have actually personalized the, the, the character. Mm -hmm. You know, you've given it an image, you've given it personality. Mm -hmm. And for that character to be able to, to sweet talk you, mm -hmm. just like you probably get sweet talked a lot around Belize, you to do <laughs> well, a lot of things, yes. you know. He actually mm -hmm. sweet talk even to bite to biting the, the, the fruit from the from the forbidden tree, mm -hmm. you know. And again then it he even you know, even to to, to that uh, degree then she then cooks Adam to take a sample mm -hmm. of the apple also. <laughs> but it, like I said, when, when you're dealing with the art form, it would have been sort of like, you then start getting a bit more complicated with having to add a, a, a separate snake and, and, and the apple. So what I did was to, within the portion of the, of the apple that is bitten, that's where I decided to actually put the formation of the snake. But mm. to carry down the story a little bit more, mm -hmm. the angle of how this, the, the, the snake is looking is facing towards the Ronald, <laughs> the, the, the rooster, yeah. which is a part of, um, Berti, Berti Bullfrog story. Mm -hmm. But because as how the story from the Garden of Eden or you know, comes then and within that act then comes into the nativity, which mm -hmm. is part of the same play, um, you find that the the young Christ child is going to grow up into a into a man. Mm -hmm. He's going to be crucified, right? But so within that part of, of that crucifixion or re reaching towards that process he's going to be, need, be denied by Peter three times. Yep. And that's when the, the rooster crows, the crows mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So basically, that is tying the, the, uh, the story of Adam and Eve to, mm -hmm. to Bertie Bullfrog, mm -hmm. right? But likewise, I decided to put in the, the hummingbird into it, mm -hmm. which is also Harold the, the, the hummingbird, yes. mm -hmm. which is also part yes. of Bullfrog, mm -hmm. Bertie Bullfrog, because when they actually said that he was a he was a national or they wanted to preserve his voice like a national monument mm -hmm. i think um you know they said about like alton i then went into thinking about harold and i and i i remember seeing the the design of the of the cusco lines down and down in peru mm -hmm. so basically i thought well if i can include that mm -hmm. in in the style of which you, it, it is it is it is designed mm -hmm. it can also in an abstract way represent the star of David or the star of Bethlehem, mm -hmm. marking the birth of, 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 of Jesus Christ. Yep. But likewise, mm -hmm. the thing about the hummingbird, if I, if I may say, is that for me, it was also there to mark something special that to, to give longevity mm -hmm. to Sir Colvin's life. Because in, I, in, my, in my youth growing up, the elderly would, like I said, would actually, um, before, would actually take the hummingbird, cut out the heart and drink it because mm -hmm. they believe it prolonged their life. Mm -hmm. So to me, the significance yeah. is to be able to grant Sir Colvin with, with a longer life. And, um, you know, because I, I think um, for, for what he has contributed to, to Belize, I would like to be able to know that he can be around for a longer period to contribute a lot more. Yes, and I'm glad you made that much. And Sir Colvin, in your lifetime, you have contributed immensely to our nation through music through art to your literary works through your time as governor general of our country and we on behalf of our Belizean and people definitely on behalf of galen university we thank you for your service to our nation and all you've done i want to bring up another issue in 1995 your your patake full was translated into chinese oh, yes. uh -huh. Yes, so, um, and I think that is fantastic. That's, a, that's millions of people that <laughs> your yes. piece of work mm -hmm. has been open to and made accessible to just by the translation. And I believe it was done by a Taiwanese, was it the ambassador or a foreign mm -hmm. minister at the time? Yes. Ambassador. The ambassador to, to Belize. And so, I mean, obviously it's not only us now who are able to enjoy your beautiful um, literary work and, and help. it helps everybody to understand our culture better and we know we have a special relationship with Taiwan we have lots of Chinese Taiwanese in our country and we're I think that was a fantastic move um, on behalf of the Taiwan Embassy and Ambassador and on behalf of our country and your great work um, Sir Carville so that is really good and if we could just mention a few of the other stories I don't want to stray from the um, the I picture oh, yeah. uh, I'm sorry the, the painting but w one one of the things I wanted to bring about the painting is, and I'll ask Fernando to say a little bit more, 
in the middle there is Jose and Maria, and they are dressed in traditional Garifuna. Um, um, black yellow um, and white. Yes, 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 yes with, with the yellow. And white. Yes, yeah. and that that I I I would want to ask um, Fernando to talk a little bit because I think it's prominent. It's right in the middle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it, it's certainly um, part of our culture. And I mm -hmm. and I think it, it's a big piece of the of the yeah. illustration of the painting. I am. Um, it's well. It's it's coming part of the story, but I I'm I'm just wondering also whether when Sir Colvin wrote that part. Whether he himself was thinking about about his involvement within within music, because you know Danvilga to us is known as the music capital, mm -hmm. so the culture capital, yeah, the culture, culture capital, 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 right? capital. But, but also me like they they grace mostly like the the music is yeah. the, the thing. So, but within the story, Jose and Maria are coming from from Danvilga. That that, that mm -hmm. is their, their their background, mm -hmm. right? So within the painting, if you're looking, if if you look at it. The drums. They, behind the book, there's um, the the book is being supported by a by a cassava root, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the end of the on the end of the root, which has been cut, if you look at the the dimples on the on the end of the the root, the, the the dimples on the on the root are forming the dimples in the in the in the steel drums, right? Mm -hmm. Which Sarkovil is also responsible for bringing into Belize. Yes. But I think, you know, it. I think it it was it. It's also I think very impacting because within within Belize and and maybe still today to a degree we still have this issue that 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 you know um, Dan Griga and and, 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 and and Toledo or Stan Creek and Toledo are like the are like the forgotten, the forgotten districts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically you're looking at, at Jose and Maria moving from, from Dan Griga going to Belize City mm -hmm. to deliver their child because they want to be probably in an environment where they feel it is it is safer. Or where the hospital is probably better, right? Mm -hmm. But not knowing that they would have gotten a support from a, an assistant from a simple housekeeper, who sees the the beauty within them as a as a as a married couple or as a couple, you know, about to about to bear a child. But that that is that basis with that part in of um of the gar garifuna bit. Yeah, very nice. And, mm -hmm. and just how he was able to bring in all those parts and yeah. even other pieces of of the mm. culture you know mm. of um, our Belizean um, culture of Sir mm. Colville's um, life bringing in the the steel um, pan? The, the steel, steel pan, yeah. the steel pan into it you know just um, really really I must I must commend you um, Fernando for mm. such a, mm. a beautiful um, job of mm. putting all those pieces together and I'm, I'm certainly hoping that teachers will take um, use this as part of, of um, their um, literature classes, you know, being able to, to interpret, because I'm pretty sure somebody else might have a slightly different interpretation. But that's what literature yes. is. That's what literature is. You, we uh, look at it. Good literature is open to several interpretations. There's that one interpretation, Hamlet, for example, could have had as many interpretations of Hamlet and the character of the prince as there are commentators. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coleridge thought Hamlet was an introspective person. The Freudians believe he was in love with his mother. He had an Oedipus complex mm -hmm. and so on, so that you have as many interpretations of Hamlet as there are crit critics. Mm -hmm. So that I cannot tell people how to interpret my book. Mm -hmm. yeah. I admire Fernando's um, interpretation. I think he is absolutely you. right. Um, though when I was writing it, I did not see or think I was putting in it all the things that he has found. Mm -hmm. But when a writer writes, he writes more than he thinks mm -hmm. he's, mm -hmm. he's doing. Yeah. They say that when a poet or an artist 
or a composer sits staring into space, he or she is actually working. Yeah. It's all right. So sure. you were working. Thank you. I actually <laughs> like that. Maybe some of our teachers need to hear this. Maybe when our students <laughs> are in the classroom staring <laughs> off in space, and yeah. if some students are hearing this, yeah, they true. could use this. But, but Miss, I was actually working <laughs> and <laughs> daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, um, Sir Carville. That is beautiful. Um, just quickly, if we could also mention some of the other stories in Patakifol. I know it has the House of Snakes. The House of Snakes. Um, the to the New World, the representative, I think, is also a good one. Yes. Um, speaks about um, election mm -hmm. and, and uh, yeah, I guess many, is really representative of our own political life here in, in Belize, mm -hmm. regardless of which um, um, political party. You know, mm -hmm. the campaigning, mm -hmm. um, the house to house, and you only see the representative when it's election time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope none of the politicians will think I was um, <laughs> aiming at <laughs> him or her in particular. <laughs> uh, it's just, as you say, general yeah. Yeah. politics. That's yes, it's it was. And yeah. the politics as we know it in mm -hmm. Belize. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and very, I'm very true because, you know, just walking on, on, on the streets, the streets could, he might be jumping potholes mm -hmm. <laughs> that, you know, haven't been taken care of for the last four or five years. The London mm -hmm. bridges. Yes, the London yeah. bridges. Yeah. Over the water, yes. Uh -huh. yep. So that's one of my favorite ones as the well. Representatives. The representative. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's a good one. There's yeah. also sugar. 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 And um, road. Yep. Road hog. Road, road hog. hog. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's good. So if you haven't read Patakifol, if you don't own one of the books, please make it your business to get one. The stories are short yes. and obviously full <laughs> of cultural information and um, representative of our culture. Yes, I may say that a student once told me that he hated literature until the teacher introduced Patakifol. Then for the first time, literature seemed to relate yes. to his life and the yes. life of the people around him. Mm -hmm. And so he loved literature from then on. And I felt if Dr. Vianeva will allow the word, I felt proud. <laughs> 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 because um, Sunday at the graduation, he said pride was a bad thing mm -hmm. and humility yeah. was a good thing. No, in the song which I wrote for Galen, I mentioned pride, but pride in a different sense mm -hmm. from Dr. Villanueva's pride. Um, not pride in the sense of arrogance, mm -hmm. yeah. but pride in the sense of joy in your achieving mm -hmm. something yeah. noble yes. or something great. Mm -hmm. That kind of pride mm -hmm. is good pride. good pride. And uh, in the song I mentioned that the, the um, I can't remember the words, but I think. Dr. Villanueva will read the words for us in our next segment. So pride <laughs> and knowledge, <laughs> and knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. live <laughs> in Galen, pride and knowledge. It certainly does. And pride in the sense of joy in achievement, not pride in the sense of arrogance. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. needs to be made clear. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and, and thank you so much for that clarification. And we'll definitely have an opportunity in our second segment to talk a bit more about your song, which we are so very pleased to have been Absolutely. received and gifted to us. Now Galen has a song. It's a beautiful song. and. Um, Sir Caldwell, you actually gave me the perfect segue into our second segment, but at this time we will take a short break. <coughs> I want to say thank you to Dr. Aline Harrison for being here today. Um, thank you for having me. We're so happy to have her on our Faculty of Education. She is one of our 
very good ones. And so thank you, Dr. Thank Harrison, you. for being here. Fernando, I have newfound respect for you. Um, thank you for that <laughs> beautiful <laughs> piece of artwork. Yeah. <coughs> um, it is really so, <coughs> it, it really piques my curiosity. Um, and so uh, Sir Cogwell is pleased with it. There's just so much reading. It would be wonderful to hear what other people, without hearing your explanation, when they look at it, knowing the two stories, what their interpretation yes. is. That would be actually a fantastic exercise. And I may say to Fernando mm. that the intention is to have the painting displayed in the mm. museum okay. at the Scout headquarters. Beautiful. For the time being, it is at my home and my family is enjoying it and friends who drop in. But finally, its resting place will be in the museum at the Scout headquarters, That's a where the whole country um, can awesome. that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. can thank you. Thank you, thank you. enjoy awesome. it. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, oh, thank you. Um, this was a wonderful um, segment for our Galen Hour um, show tonight. We'll take a break and then we'll come back. We'll have two other guests with us, um, Dr. Cynthia Eve Aird, Provost of Galen University, and Dr. René Villanueva, Senior Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Galen University. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back with the Galen Hour. Gotten vaccinated? Galen University is offering five free courses for five students for the fall 2021 semester. Here's how to win. You must be enrolled in one of Galen's bachelor or associate degree programs for fall 2021. Send your details to studentaffairs at galen.edu.vc. Make sure to include your full name, a picture of yourself with your vaccination card, a picture of your vaccination card showing your name and the card number, include your program and your faculty. The deadline is August 15th. For your future, for my future, for our future. Get vaccinated today. Galen University, promoting academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. We're about to start our second segment. We still have with us Sir Carville, our special guest tonight. Sir Carville, Sir Carville thank you for staying with us. Um, but we've added to our panel um, Dr. René Villanueva Senior, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Galen, and Dr. Cynthia Eve Aird, Provost of Galen University. So our discussion takes a little bit of a different twist. We'll talk about two important things now in this second po portion of our Galen Hour. One is the Galen Institute of Art, Culture, Music, and Drama, and it's called the Sir Carville Young Institute. Yes. So Sir Carville, in honor of you and all the wonderful literary and musical works you've done um, for Belize, so we're proud about that. And then we'll talk about the Galen song, a song that was gifted to Galen University by Sir Carl William. So thank you for staying tuned, and this should be an, a very exciting portion of our Galen Hour. I want to start with you, Dr. Aird. Let's talk about the Institute, but let us, let us, have, uh, let us have our audience see the portion of the okay. um, graduation where, we, where you explained. Okay. Um, the Institute. So if we could play that video, please. I actually got my start in higher education working with Sir Colville Young um, when he was the president of the University College of Belize. I remember telling him that one day I hoped to become the president of the university. Well, I'm not the president of the University of Belize, but I'm the provost of Galen University. In recognition of the outstanding service to education, statesmanship and art, culture, music and drama of our former Governor General, His Excellency Sir Colville Young, we announce today the creation of the Sir Colville Young Institute of Art, Culture, Music and Drama. His Excellency has granted permission for us to develop this institute in his name and has already donated several of his original musical compositions and writings to the university, including a treasure trove of textbooks on linguistics. The Sir Carvel Young Institute of Art, Culture, Music, and Drama will collect, preserve, and safeguard Belizean art, 
culture, music, and drama. It will both nurture in our youth and others an appetite for art, culture, music, and drama. It is envisioned that the Institute will safeguard Belize's cultural heritage, reclaim and preserve indigenous culture in all its expressions, develop and provide high-quality arts education programming, nurture Belizean art, support artists and art creation, support and or partner with other local, regional, and regional organizations to preserve, present performing arts, support creation and presentation of film, video, and media arts, develop an artist residency program and facilitate associated outreach programming, support cultural awareness and build stronger connections between community groups an advocate for arts and groups. Through art and all its expressions, it will develop a greater understanding of Belize in a reg local, regional, and global context. The Institute will be legally constituted within Galen, and it will have a committee comprised of the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, three faculty members, and one of Sir Carville's sons will work together on the development of the Institute including, of course, the necessary fundraising, and they will sit and, and the formation of a board of directors for the institute. Thank you, Sir Colville, for allowing us to do this. We heard um, Dr. Eve Aird explain the institute. Mm -hmm. Dr. Aird, you're here with us tonight. Tell us a little bit more. In your, mm -hmm. well, you know, um, on Sunday at our commencement exercises, I had the, ple the pleasure of having my daughter present at the exercises, and she was quite taken aback by the painting and what it represented. And immediately after the service, um, she pulled me aside and she says, Mommy, you all have to get those stories illustrated and written for children so that they could enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and then I, I began thinking about, I have four grandsons. Mm -hmm. And I know how they spend their days, especially their vacation time. They grew up on Netflix. My good friend and colleague, Derek Satchwells, um, used to talk about uh, Nickelodeon accent, that mm -hmm. little children growing mm -hmm. up today in, in front of the Nickelodeon preschool, the accents that they have. But our children are being raised. They're developing an appetite for Netflix and for Nickelodeon and all of the Minecraft and everything that they find in those on those devices that they hold in their hands. We, our children, are not growing up listening to Anansi stories, listening to the folklore that our ancestors, our our mothers and fathers um, listen to. I've always had an interest in collecting some of the folklore. When our older generation pass on, that dies with them. Mm -hmm. That we lose, that part of our history. Um, many years ago, Sir Carver will remember this, when we, um, I first worked at the University College of Belize, my good friend, a former student of mine, and then a colleague, Sayo Bajwani, worked with the uh, uh, UNESCO funded, funded program to collect and, and, and write some of the Belizean, Belizean folklore. Uh, we had Professor Irvin Beck from mm -hmm. Goshen College, who did a Fulbright program with us for a year at, um, at the University College of Belize. Um, and he was a folklore, um, a folklore specialist. That was his area of expertise in literature. Mm -hmm. And so we used to have storytelling festivals at the Old Bliss Institute. So some of that is preserved with us. My Mm -hmm. Boss, uh, mm -hmm. the chairman of the Board of Trustees tells me, mm -hmm. and I really want to get my hands on it, um, that he has the George Marquise collection. Mm -hmm. But we don't hear it. We don't hear, we, we don't, you know, I grew up listening to George Marquise um, on, the, on Radio Belize. Those are wonderful stories, and we need to tell them. We need to preserve them. We need to have artists like Fernando who teaches our young people mm -hmm. how to depict the realities of their, li of the, of their, ex of their life. In San Ignacio, the next time you come to Galen, um, Sir Carver, we have to take you um, to the mural on, on West Street and uh, right in, almost in front of Fernando's house. Yeah. 
Um, Galen University painted a, a mural in a, um, as a result of a course called Community Engaged Art. And that actually um, represents uh, culture in San Ignacio town and, and some of the, the old time people and what they did, like murdered sons, mm -hmm. and her role in life in San Ignacio. He has a, another class that he, um, he has a mural class that he teaches. And in one of the other classes, in one of those courses, they, the students also painted a mural depicting their attitudes and beliefs, the political, um, the, the what was happening in Belize at the time. Mm -hmm. But we need, we need to have an institute that preserves, to collect all that culture that is dying and to preserve it, but to also develop in our young people and old people like myself an, ap an ap appetite for Belizean culture, whether it is in um, literature, mm -hmm. poetry, mm -hmm. drama, um, art, music. What, music. Um, and that is what this institute will do. Dr. Ed, I'm really happy to hear you say this. Sometimes we are not, we don't think about what we're losing. And I'm happy that in terms of our culture, and um, a lot of our young people indeed are not growing up knowing the things we know that would help us. I like several things that you said, one being the illustration of um, Sir Carl Will Young's Papa Kifo. Mm -hmm. um, in the previous yeah. segment, Fernando and Dr. Harrison, we were, uh, along with Sir Carl, we were saying the same thing, that we need to take that book and do a demonstration so that the younger children can mm -hmm. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to wait until they get older. Mm -hmm. But indeed, indeed, if the institute, that uh, Sir Carl Young Institute that Galen is um, going to open. Will open. Will open. Will open. Is opening. Yes. Will um, preserve the culture that we will lose if we don't do right. this. Then this is a fantastic contribution that we'll be doing to our people in our country. And and one of the things, apart from just collecting and mm -hmm. writing down George Marquis's works and mm -hmm. playing them periodically, mm -hmm. um, it will also encourage our youth. Our young, young people, people need an outlet. We mm -hmm. are a creative mm -hmm. country. We are a creative society. Mm -hmm. They need an outlet. And so with the Sir Carl Young Institute, it's, we can have some degree programs. We can, mm -hmm. The institute can offer some courses that support our degree programs, yes, but we can do s small things like having a summer institute mm -hmm. um, and having a Karen Vernon, for example, come back and teach some dance. Mm -hmm. I hope she's listening mm -hmm. <laughs> because I intend to call, I intend to call her uh, uh, and come back and work with us and, and, and help to develop um, the, uh, the, um, <laughs> talents within our young people, people, draw that out of them and then develop it and so that they have a healthy outlet for their creative passions. Yes. I, I, I really like to hear this. And I'm hoping all of our schools from the primary take heed and actually ensure that there is a portion of their teaching and learning that enforces and makes aware our young children to our culture that, they, that will be lost if we don't do this. I believe the new, the, the proposed new curriculum for schools do, um, does have mm -hmm. um, some art and, and, and uh, articles, artistic expression there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So Dr. Ed, if you could just share for our, um, our viewing audience a little bit of, we're talking about the institute, but where will this institute be? Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, initially the institute will be a virtual institute because we, we will gather people together and we will um, do, perform, do performances of some of Sir Carl's work. He has given us quite a bit of his work um, that, we, that we want to arrange and perform yes. along with the beautiful song that the chairman will talk about a little bit, in a little bit. But the institute will be built on Galen University's new campus. Um, we have a new campus that we are working on the, in, in the final designs for um, mm -hmm. across the road up above um, mm -hmm. on a hill overlooking Central mm -hmm. Farm. Mm -hmm. We call it our university city mm -hmm. and the institute itself will be built there mm -hmm. um, and it will include an art school, uh, art camps and so on for and that's where the so on. Yes. That's where the institute will be. It will be right. sitting on the beautiful hills in the Cayo district that's why which takes so us lovely. right <laughs> into the next item that we want to talk about. So, Carvel, was there anything you wanted to add to what Dr. No, Ailey said? No, at all. So, let's let, because th this song is beautiful, and so I know we've all been waiting for the song. I, I would like to ask that um, 
the the video clip of the song that we have be played. Okay. If you know, and then then we can read the words, and then we can discuss the words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Beautiful Galen song composed by Sir Carville Young and sung for us by Dr. Yvonne Hall. Do not do Julia that. Hall. Julia Hall. <laughs> oh my gosh, my apologies. Julia by Hall. Dr. Julia Hall. Yes. Dr. Julia, my apologies. Yes. So, um. Yes. Yes. Tell us, can, would you like to read the you words? Want to start reading? Yes, <laughs> please. Well, let me say good night or good evening to everyone. Good and evening. It's a pleasure to be on. Galen's um, show. Thanks for the invita invitation. And we want to commend Dr. Eve yeah. and uh, the faculty for the wonderful work you've been doing. You know, I'm yeah. very proud of the people at Galen. You know, I'm very proud to be associated with Galen in, in, in the way I am. And uh, Dr. Eve makes things very, very easy. <laughs> She's so efficient and, 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 and so as a doctor, I have to pay tribute to, um, to you publicly, right? And to, to the faculty and Thank the you. deans and everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we all as a team make mm -hmm. things right. happen. Sir Cosbill, as we know, mm -hmm. has served our country for, as the Governor General for so many years, 28 years to be exact, right, Sir Cosbill? And we know that you, you are an accomplished musician, which is proven there because the piano, yes. you were playing the piano. Mm -hmm. You composed the music. You directed the music, the singing, right? And you also wrote the words. So you are that um, poet, that linguist, that um, musical arranger, and of course that musical um, mm -hmm. performer. Um, and beside that, you are also a writer, like we heard in the first mm -hmm. segment of the <laughs> program, writing so many literary um, gems. Mm -hmm. And a scholar. Like claim as its own, right? And a scholar. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> music wise, you have introduced. Um, steel pan music to Belize. You have written so many works that I have lost count, really, um, because uh, there was a CD uh, about mm -hmm. with me right now that, that that is made up of works done by Sarkov. You have written for Christmas, you have mm -hmm. written for Masses, you have written The Ode to Independence, and so many other important works uh, that have stimulated our but own nation. But you will try and get performed at um, yes. Yes, we will. Galen, yes, we will. Yes, yes, we will. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. We're working on that. We'll definitely. And you have touched the lives of so many Belizeans. We've heard our, our provost saying that she looked up to you, you know. Certainly, the my association will go way back. Um, um, I can't remember when, but um, I know for all your 
all your functions have been to almost sorry, 99 percent mm -hmm. of the functions mm -hmm. you felt <laughs> while you were governor general many of them have mc i was going through some files some old files the other day and i saw i came across almost about 50 or 60 notes from you mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and so, so so yeah i count it a pleasure and honor and a privilege to being associated with you the way the way i have been mm -hmm. and, and and i want to thank you publicly and recognize you publicly for that because you have touched my life and you have touched the lives of so many other Belizeans. Um, I want to thank you on behalf of our university for this song which you readily composed. I mean you, you offered it and and, mm -hmm. and and I want to thank you for having the initiative to offer us an anthem because up until now our university did not have an anthem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That uh, that would bond and twine us mm -hmm. together as, as as one that we can identify with. And so your offer to provide us with an anthem was very well received mm -hmm. um, by, by ourselves. You know, uh, so we want to, to, to thank you so much uh, from the bottom of our hearts for that. And having said that, now let me do, do what I've yes. been asked to do, which is to go to the words. Yes, Chairman. Um, <laughs> the words and the handwritten in His Excellency's handwriting. Um, when you when you gave it to me, you gave it to me in your own handwriting. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go through them and 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 and, and slowly. On the lovely hills of Galen, purest fountains rose and fell watering the western gardens where our students now excel. Reaching higher, sister, brother, ever pacing one another. Visions glorious, visions vast, of a future that shall last. In the sacred groves of Galen, pride and knowledge ever dwell, with our ancient Mayan culture still inspiring to excel. Great technology refining, best of old and new combining, visions glorious, visions vast of a future that shall last. Very short, very effective, very easy to memorize and to the point. Right? Um, I could, if I could say, mm -hmm. um, immediately after our graduation ceremony, was over on Sunday. I think within minutes, Dr. Barrow got a text, a voicemail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from one of our former graduates. And she was just so overjoyed and happy that Galen had an answer. Mm -hmm. And she talked about what it would mean for, to, to, for the university, for the, pop, for the, popula um, the school population, the alumni. Mm -hmm. And she asked that our next graduating class that they sing the anthem mm -hmm. at the graduation ceremony. Yes, I, I that they be taught. That. That be, and and that, that is something that I do want um, that we do. That we have we, we have a choir, a school choir, who sings the anthem. That we sing it. It will it will certainly be played at this year's new student orientation in, in August, and that we play it at other major school events. Okay. Um, the one of my faculty members has said that we also have to play it when we go to uh, athletic events and yes. the school mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, yeah. that it's sung before and at school rallies that, that encourage our athletes before they go out onto the field. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's a rallying call. It is a rallying them. call. It's a uniting um, school anthems and school songs always serve the purpose almost as a mascot does mm -hmm. that they unite families, students, faculty. So this adds to our uniting. Galen is known for its care of its students and how dedicated we are mm -hmm. to our students. This is one additional layer, one additional way in which we unite and care for our students. So I really mm -hmm. like it. I like some of the words, um, Chairman. <laughs> um, On the lovely hills yes, of Galen. Lovely hills of Galen. And Visions. Know, they're talking about the lovely hills yeah. of the Cayo District, the right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the Cayo District is known for the lovely hills. And then our new campus mm -hmm. um, will go to some lovely hills, hills indeed, as so well. it's a futuristic. A yes. beacon right? overlooking Belize. Belize. <laughs> yes. Overlooking Belize, yeah. you know? Purest fountains rose and fell. Mm -hmm. Excellency, their purity, yes. the, breath, the breathing, the fresh air. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Environmental, mm -hmm. care. environmental yes. aspect nature. of it. Right. Nature, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Watering the western gardens. It tells yep. you where the university Lovely. is located in the <laughs> western part of the country. The beautiful gardens of mm -hmm. Galen. Mm -hmm. And the fact that 
uh, when you educate, you're really uh, bringing up flowers. You know, you're bringing up, so you're watering right. the, West, the, 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 the Western right. gardens, right? Where our students now excel, mm -hmm. right? Reaching higher, you know, you're moving on, you're mo reaching yes. up. Um, sister and brother, you notice it ties us in mm -hmm. all as sisters and brothers mm -hmm. as, as one. So there's unity in purpose mm -hmm. and uh, reflected in it, you know, ever pacing one mm -hmm. another. So mm -hmm. we are challenging each other right. to excel, right. to move up, yep. you know, and, and looking out for, mm -hmm. for, for each other. Then the future, visions glorious, visions vast, yes. because we are preparing our students mm -hmm. for a future that shall last. Mm -hmm. Am I good with that, yes. Excellency? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then um, it goes on in the second verse because, like I said, it's very sharp and to the point. That's mm -hmm. what I love it. In the second, in the, in the second um, verse, it says, "In the sacred groves of Galen," it means that education is sacred. Mm -hmm. Education is something that we should hold dear to us. In my mind, I keep on saying education means to draw out from within. You know, mm -hmm. to make a person the best that the person can become, mm -hmm. right? So in the sacred, that's sacred because it comes from within. So in the sacred groves of Galen, mm -hmm. pride and knowledge ever dwell. Mm -hmm. So always we have pride and knowledge. And you explained the pride earlier on that it's mm -hmm. not that haughty pride as, as, as look at me, you know. Uh, you know it's not arrogance. No, it's not that. It's not arrogance. No. It's pride, that feeling that comes from inside that makes you want to cry because you're so proud of it's what you see and what you achieve. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So pride and knowledge ever. Joy in achievement. Yes. Achievement. That's the kind of pride. That's yes. the pride yes. in achievement. With our ancient Mayan culture, so we go back to the ancient um, mm -hmm. Mayan culture of Belize, you know, as we all know, that whole area is filled with Mayan mm -hmm. temples, the remains of Mayan and cities. And we do have, a, we do have um, archaeological sites on campus that we yeah. are going to oh, preserve. Lovely. Yeah, and on our new campus we have the sites yeah. as, as well. You know, still inspiring to excel. Mm -hmm. We knew how the Mayans built their temples. Mm -hmm. We know the story how they right. built their temples. Mm -hmm. It was always about excelling and doing, and doing better and reaching up. You know, great technology refining, the best of the old and new combining, showing that mm -hmm. our past is very important. If we don't know our past, we, it is difficult to appreciate our present and even more difficult to chart our future. That's right. You know, so it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's all tied in. So the best of old and new combining. Then we look at visions glorious, visions vast. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. just now they are cited. Mm -hmm. We are looking at a Belize mm -hmm. that is number uno, number one. Okay? Visions glorious, visions vast of a future that shall last. So you come from the past with the minds mm -hmm. right through to the view and to the future. And of course, and of course, Galen is we hold sustainable development there. We, yes. we our campus will be a sustainable campus. And it's sustainable okay. development is threaded through everything we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I was going to say that adequate. the words of our Galen song speaks to our academic excellence. Mm -hmm. It speaks to sustainable, mm -hmm. sustainable development, and it speaks to lifelong learning. That's so right. caught up mm -hmm. in there, whether intentionally or not, Sir Colville, are really the, 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 the point upon which Galen is built and which we do what we do at Galen. Let's <laughs> call so Galen Summit and to read and look at it. So the pillars of Galen mm. University. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a Colvin. In these two verses, you have mm. captured the essence the of essence. what Galen is. That's right. Yes. In these two verses. The essence of you know? Galen. And that's, so a, that's exactly that what Mr. Karanikis, the chairman of the board of directors, also said. He actually was humbled and, and in awe yes. of this wonderful act of generosity, this most meaningful act mm. for, for Galen. Eh? Mm. Mm -hmm. So I guess from Alyssa Covell, I'll have to say on behalf of Mr. Costas Karanikis, who's the chairman of the board of directors of Galen University, and the board of directors of Galen University, mm. and on behalf of the board of trustees mm -hmm. of Galen University, on behalf of our provost, the faculty of Galen University, and, students. and on behalf of all the students, past, present, and future That's of right. Galen mm -hmm. University, 
we want to thank you so much. We want to register publicly our thank you to you for this lovely anthem. Thank you so much. And here, That's your right. own handwriting. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Colbert. I think thank you. Some mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I might say that, in a sense, I'm only giving back to you what you give to me. Because the word excel mm -hmm. is an important part of what Gillen is all about. Mm -hmm. And it's an important part of the song yes, also. Okay. The students excel. Mm -hmm. And the Mayan culture inspires us to excel. A lot of people don't realize how important and great was the achievement of the Mayas mm -hmm. in mathematics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in architecture, of course, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. pyramids and temples, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also in astronomy. Mm -hmm. They surpassed what they had in Europe mm -hmm. in astronomy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that when I single out the Mayan culture out of all the different cultures in Belize, I was not being, what should I say, one-sided. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They are world-recognized as the greatest culture of the new world mm -hmm. and perhaps of the world at the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm only giving to you what you give to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so yes. much, Sir Calvin. Thank you, Sir Calvin. You have served us with dignity and grace. You're mm -hmm. an icon in our society, and you are now forever a part of Galen University. That's through right. our Galen Song and through our Sir Calvin Young Institute. Institute, yes. And so we are very pleased that you agreed to be with us here today. We thank you for accepting our recognition yes, uh, on Sunday at our 18th commencement exercises. We are proud to have you um, represent us in the ways that you do, and um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank this you brings. Too. Thank you, Sylvia. Chairman. Yes, thank you, thank you. for joining us, mm -hmm. Dr. Eve. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. This brings us to the wrap-up um, mm -hmm. section of our Galen Hour. I'd like for us to play the Galen song one more time before we take our break, please. For sure. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. I want to thank all of you for watching our show tonight. Thank you for viewing our last six episodes of the Galen Hour. This brings us to the end of our first season and what a finale. 
We couldn't have asked for a better finale. It was an absolute pleasure to have Sir Carville as our special guest tonight. So I want to thank you for tuning in to our first season of the Galen Hour. Tonight is our last night for this season. We will take a month break, the month of August, and we'll be back bright and early in September, on the first Thursday in um, September. We'll be back, same time, same place, live on Love TV, streamed on Love Facebook page, and shared on Galen's Facebook page. We thank you for being our audience, for staying tuned, and we look forward to all the um, wonderful things that we have to share with you in the next season. So be sure to come back, but of course we will advertise our return. So thank you, and have a good night. The Galen Hour. Every Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. on Love Television and Facebook Live.